This is the Couch Extra. A show turn on the couch. Hello Australia, welcome to this very special Couch Extra. Steve's been away, I've been away, we've all got back now and he has got a very special guest to talk to on Talking Travel. Steve, who have you got for us? I've got a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Kate Webster. She's also a travel journalist. Kate is an expert in Africa. We've been to, uh, to Africa uh, on a famil together. We had the best time, but it was also very, very important um, mm. because she's very much into... Uh, conservation there, particularly rhino conservation, and she has just had the most amazing experience. She's been to the mountains of Rwanda, wow. where she has been there interacting with those huge silverback gorillas there. She got up very close and very personal to us. I thought, well, we've got to talk about what well, I think will be one of the best travel experiences that you could possibly have. She sounds fantastic. So yes. without any further delay, Kate, welcome to the couch. Over to you, Steve. Hi, Kate. How are you going? You good? I am fantastic. Thank you for having me. It's great to speak to you again after, well, it's been a bit of a while since we saw each other. It was earlier on in this year when you came to Perth. But I was intrigued. You've only just got back from Rwanda and there you went into, you, you had some amazing adventures there, but... The one that got me was when you went up into the mountains and you were mingling with those gorillas. What a fabulous experience. Oh, look, they say it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You've done it twice. But <laughs> I will spend the rest of my lifetime trying to go back and see them again and again. They are absolutely fantastic. Do they take much notice of you when you get up that close? Now, I know you've got guides and there's a, a lot of regulations, etc., etc. but do they sort of look at you with the same sort of curiosity at you would, as you would look at them? Look, I think they do. They are curious, but it's really well run where you don't impose on them too much. So you're there and they're doing their thing, but it's not imposing on their time so you do have just one hour with them right. just one hour and, and of course they would only probably see what one group a day or maybe two or three a day would they so that they spend most of the time by themselves yeah look there's only a few groups that they will let people go and interact with and that obviously reduces the time with them yeah. uh, they are habituated to humans so yeah. They are used to humans going, but there are only a certain number of families that they have allowed that to happen with. Okay. There is only one group that will go and spend time with them, each family per day, and the maximum group size is eight people. So right. it's not like they're getting too much interaction with humans, which keeps it really natural. It's fantastic. Now, you're, you're, you're trudging through a tropical rainforest uh, and they are in the mountains. I think it's, a, the, is it the Varunga Mountains that they're in? Um, and so what's it like to get up there? How difficult is it to go and, uh, and get to their habitat? Look, there's different grades of treks you can do. There is easy, moderate and hard. And the best part is that you can actually, and I do recommend it, is hiring a porter. So your right. porter will cost you around about 10 to 15 US dollars. And they're fantastic to have, not just for helping you along the way, but just to speak to them about what they used to do. Look, some of these poachers, um, some of these, sorry, guides are ex-poachers. So you're giving them an income to go and do something that's the complete opposite to what they used to do. So it's supporting the actual conservation of these gorillas. And it's, look, some treks are hard yakka. You can walk for hours. And well, it's not we've just been showing you, the park. you haven't been able to see it, but we have just been showing your photos that you took and they're absolutely fabulous. But we had that experience last year when we went to Madikwe Game Reserve in South Africa and we got involved in a rhino conservation project, which is one of the best experiences I have ever had. You have been going back. You've been going back to South Africa and you've been going back to Mozambique. So can you tell me about your passion for uh, the rhinoceros conservation projects, please? Look, I think... 
The rhinos are such an endangered species. It's something that we really do have to work hard to protect them. And the best way to do that is for people to actually go and see them in the wild because you don't know how to protect something unless you can literally see it with your own eyes. Uh, now, Mozambique, just bordering on Kruger National Park there, there's a uh, group there called the Dyke Advisory Group. Now, they're doing co conservation projects and counter-poaching that are protecting the rhinos in and out of Kruger National Park. And like you said, that experience we had in Mozambique was absolutely incredible. To get that hands-on, to help with one of these animals is is something that you will take home and memory that you'll keep forever. At the moment, and you can't see it, uh, we, we are showing vision of the, them dehorning a rhinoceros, mm -hmm. and I believe this was in Kruger. Why do they do that, Kate? Why do they take the horns? Look, there's different methods that they are working with. They were microchipping the horns, but unfortunately the poachers were learning that and they were literally still dehorning these rhinos and removing the microchip. So it is a very extreme measure, but it seems to be one that is working at the moment. So if they can dehorn these rhinos, it's less less of a an, an encouragement, I guess, for the poachers to go in and try and take these rhinos. And these people that you've been working with, they are extraordinarily dedicated and in some instances have actually put their lives at risk, their own lives at risk, haven't they? Oh, absolutely. Every day that they're out there in the field, they're putting their lives at risk to protect these animals so our future generations can enjoy them. And I can tell you from my own experience, you do not realise how magnificent these rhinoceroses are until you get up really close and personal. I know when I was there, you and I had pretty much the same experience of putting our hand in Priscilla's mouth. That was the name of the rhinoceros that we got the, the opportunity to name uh, to keep the airwaves open while, while Priscilla was, was stunned. And... You never, ever think that you're going to have that sort of experience, do you? No, look, it's one thing to sit and look at these rhinos on a TV documentary. It's another thing to sit and watch them from a vehicle from afar. But when you're actually sat next to them, you're feeling them breathe and you're helping in every way possible to ensure that that rhino has a future survival. It's it's beyond an incredible experience. It is literally life-changing. We're just showing photos of your Mozambican friends and these <laughs> guys are armed to the hilt uh, and they need to, to be like that, don't they? Because uh, poachers are pretty deadly, aren't they? Yeah, look, I mean, unfortunately it is, it, it is something that requires a lot of work from boots on the ground and these people are, like we said, working day in, day out to try and protect these animals and it is unfortunate that it's come to this stage but it's something that needs to be done and these men are incredible. Without question, like I said, day in, day out, they're doing this, they're looking after these animals. Now, how can people get involved in uh, rhino conservation? I know that there's some tours, etc., that people can do, which are, which are full-on tours uh, helping, uh, helping the conservators. H how can people get involved in this, Kate? Look, there's a company called Where Wild Things Roam and they have a select number of tours, specifically with South Africa and also with Rwanda, where... Your booking and your travel to go and see these animals not only benefits you because you're having a great experience, but the funds from those tours go directly back to the people on the ground so they can continue their hard work. And this is not so much a leisure holiday because uh, when you go on these tours, you're actually working to preserve and conserve these rhinoceroses, aren't you? It, it, it is the real thing. It's not pretend. Oh, absolutely. Look, you, you get the best of it because you'll get to go see, see them in the wild. You'll get to go have the great game experience. But then we also expect you to get your hands a little bit dirty. You're going to have to sit there. You're going to have to help them move that rhino when it needs shifting from left to right to make sure that its body's in the right position. You're going to be very hands-on. 
Tate, thanks very much for speaking to us. I know that you're heading off to Tanzania and I'm going back to South Africa. We'll probably say hello to each other at some airport somewhere, but keep up the good work. Uh, I love what you're doing. I've been talking to Kate Webster. Uh, Kate Webster is just passionate about Africa. She knows so much about it. Kate, thanks very much for chatting to us on the couch. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to waving at you from passing planes. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Fred, that was Kate Webster. She is a fascinating person. What a wonderful job that she yeah. has. And what a, what a wonderful environment. I think Kate's gone, but what a wonderful environment to work in. Yeah. Those rhino she's, rhinos. She's very, she's very, very passionate about I conservation. I tell you what, they're massive, aren't they? Yes, you they see are. the, when they were cutting off the horns yes. and they were trying to roll them over. Obviously, they put the banding on the mouth that, to that, stop that them so biting. That's so they can't it. see because uh, so they don't get worried. Yes. Well, they, they know that Agitated. something's happening, but they don't get agitated. They are asleep, by the way, mm. and you saw how many people to, to try to get the rhino yeah, up. Huge. The one we, we were with uh, last year, mm. um, she was a three-year-old female and she weighed a couple of tonne and she wow. was, you know, pretty, pretty heavy. So, well, no, it's great. Look, there it is there, the website that yeah. she gave out on, on air if you want to support yeah. this fantastic conservation work. It is amazing. There it is on screen. And uh, we do urge you to support it and we'll put it up on our website as well. Thank you, Steve. As always, Pleasure, another Fred. fantastic travel segment. Uh, a wonderful idea to have Kate online there. And thank you for watching. Keep watching The Couch on a Sunday night at 8.30. Or well, don't forget you can watch it first here on Facebook at 5.30 on a Wednesday. See you soon on another Couch Extra. Bye now. Connect with The Couch online through Facebook, Instagram and YouTube.